The PSP has an amazing lineup of games, but with a platform now being 18 years old, it is slowly showing its age. With most of the official batteries being dead, the only way we can play it is by using either a low quality battery, the DC input, or via emulation. While I'm a big fan of the PSP, it's crazy to think that our memory actively blocks the slow read speeds, low res screen, and the poor D-pad on some of these models. And now with the newer handhelds such as the Retro Pocket 3, we can effectively have a PSP HD. Here's a guide to get you started. Welcome to Team Mandori. Subscribe. The first thing we want to do is change our controls. At stock, the PPSSP emulator has the D-pad set incorrectly. We can bind it by pushing the plus button and then setting each direction for the D-pad. We can then remove the ones we don't use by pushing this X button on the side. The next one that's bound incorrectly is a select button. The RP3 has it on the top, so we need to push this and then the select button. Another one to change is the fast forward button. If you want to skip through annoying bits of the game, you need to have this. So we'll set this for R2. And the next one to set is pause. This essentially goes back to the PPSSP main screen. For this, we'll use L2. Another very useful one to have is Axis Swap. For this, I'm going to push in the right analog stick for R3. Now in game, whenever we push this, it switches the analog stick with the D-pad. One more bind I like to add is for me and my Katamari. We essentially bind our right analog stick for the face buttons, so we can play Katamari Damashi much like a PlayStation 2. Na 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 Katamari Damashi. Next up is the graphics menu. For the Retro Pocket 3, we want to have this set as OpenGL for most games. From our testing, we've found that the Vulkan renderer runs particularly worse on this unit, but if you have issues, you can always try this option. Next up is Mode. For the most part, we want this set as buffered, but if the game is running slow, we can choose Skip Buffer Effect. While some games work great with this option, many do not and give graphical glitches. Next thing we'll cover is Frame Skip. If the game does run exceptionally slow, we'll need to use this. It's usually better to keep a frame skip of 1 or 2 at the top and keep auto frame skip unticked. This will ensure a solid frame rate rather than have it speed up and slow down throughout the game. If it's possible, we're going to try not touch any frame skipping at all. There's some more options down the bottom here, and one of them is very important. As the Retroid Pocket 3 has a very unusual screen resolution, we need to change this option here. At stock, it is set as native screen resolution, which really impacts performance, so I need to change it for any of the other three options. Most of the other options down here can be left as is, but some speed up can be had by changing some of these options. We can make textures look better by changing upscale level, and if we have some glitches in our textures, we can change this here to nearest. Last thing we're going to check out here is system. And scrolling down here, we get more options. A couple of these can be quite handy, especially this one here, where we can overclock our core CPU. Originally, the PSP had a clock speed of 222 megahertz, but by speeding this up, we'll be able to have our PSP perform quick calculations, speeding up some of our games. To set this value, I usually have it start sliding and then press OK. But most games though, we should just leave this as auto. There are also other options here that can impact performance. As the PSP used UMD, we can set it to emulate this, which may slow down or even make for a better experience. Once we have our games set correctly, we need to push L2 to get back to our participants of the menu, then go down to Create Game Config. This will save all of your settings, so next time we play, you'll be good to go. So now you have your way around PSP, let's have a look at some games and their settings. First up, Assassin's Creed Bloodlines. We can play this game at full speed, in double resolution, and two times upscaling. And here are the settings. Next up is Blood Bowl, a nice blend of football, fantasy and chess. As this is essentially a board game, it's very unusual to be one of the harder games to run, but as it has a slow pace, we'll give it some frame skip. This is running at double PSP resolution with a buffered setting. We've also boosted the CPU clock, so it takes shorter time for the CPU to think its moves.
Here we have Grand Theft Auto Vice City Stories. It's pretty incredible how far we can push this game. Double PSP resolution, upscale textures, as well as a bump on the CPU clock to speed up in-game rendering. Remember we can change from the analog stick to D-pad by simply pushing the R3 button. Smooth sailing. Did this game have hot coffee? I still need to check it out. And here are the settings. If you're older than 35 years old, you may prefer the top-down versions of these games. This one, GTA Chinatown Wars, is a blast. We are running this game at double resolution, and it looks fantastic. Here's Ultimate Ghosts and Goblins. This has a very strong following, but is way too difficult for me. We're running this at double resolution, and it's running under the buffered setting. Me and Mike had to marry. This is one of the craziest games you'll ever play, and it's a blast on any system. This one's running at double resolution and double upscale texturing. Next up is Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. We need to remember that this game runs at 20 FPS on the real PSP, so this game is actually running at 100% speed. That is, with double resolution, faster loading times, and the analog D-pad switch. Here are the settings. Outrun 2006 Coast to Coast is one of my favourite PSP games. The buffered setting cannot run at 100%, and unbuffered on OpenGL gives us a graphical mess. The only way to get this running at a decent speed is using unbuffered on the Vulcan renderer. Reflections are missing, but it's very playable under these settings. It actually runs at 100%, apart from a few areas of the track. Noticeably, this area here. This here is running at double PSP resolution, and a little bump to the CPU core to help it rendering. And here are the settings. We could select a few more speed up options, but we found they didn't help during testing. Next up is Ridge Racers, also known as Ridge Racer 2. If you haven't yet played a game of the series, this is a great one to start with. This is running here at double PSP resolution, and it's in the buffered setting. If you wanted to upscale the textures, you'd be able to do that if you use unbuffered, but doing so will lose the mirror at the top of the screen. And here are our settings. Next game is Tekken Dark Resurrection, also known as Tekken 5 for the PSP. We have it here running in double resolution and textures are upscaled. If we use the unbuffered setting, we get no image on both the lava stage and the helicopter stage, but even so, this is running full speed on the buffered setting.
Tekken 6 is a nice improvement over Dark Resurrection. Unlike the last game, it can run well in unbuffered. With 2x PSP resolution and texture upscaling, this game runs perfect. And the settings. Next up is Wipeout Pulse. The Wipeout games on the PSP should not be missed. They are actually amazing games, and at two times resolution, these look fantastic. Next up is Dragon's Lair, a faithful port of the arcade original. This is running at double PSP resolution as well as texture upscaling. Full speed all the way. Here are the settings. Persona 3. These games have a massive following and you can play Persona 1, 2 and 3 on the PSP with double resolution and texture upscaling. And here are the settings that are identical to Dragon's Lair. You can use these settings for many of the easier games to emulate. This wouldn't be a Team Pandora video without a bit of Amiga. The PSP had incredible ports of both Pinball Fantasies and Pinball Dreams, and if you hit the select button, you can play in Tate mode. The best pinball game ever. Finally, to the elephant in the room, this is God of War Chains of Olympus. To run this game without graphical glitches, we need to use the buffered setting, and the only way to get it playable in the box is to use frame skip. Here's a quick look at the settings. If you have the frame skipping set to 3 and auto frame skip set to on, it'll skip a maximum of 3 frames if needed. Outside that, we set it as light as possible but we saw no improvement with using disabled slower effects. With this game, there is one more thing we could try, which is essentially limit the internal emulator to 30 FPS. To do this, we first need to find out the ROM ID that we have. If we've played the game and made a setting file, we should be able to find our game ID in the PSP system folder. And here it is. So first now, we'll make a text file on our PC. If you cannot see the .txt, you'll need to check the file name extensions at the top right. So we know our game ID is the one with 325 at the end. I'll select this, right click and copy, then go to our text file, right click, rename, select all of this, then right click and paste. Hit yes to the warning, and we can go ahead and open this file. Now in here we want to paste our cheat. So in this mini window we go to the very top, and then select all of its contents. Right click, then copy, then go back to our file, then right click and paste. At the top left, hit file, then save. Now we need to copy this file onto our Retroid. Right click, copy. Now we want to paste it into our PSP cheats folder. If it asks, hit copy and replace. Now we can go back to our Retroid Pocket 3. To enable cheats, we need to go into the system menu. Scroll down and then select enable cheats. We can then start the game. At the top right we can see it's at 60 FPS, so the cheat is not yet enabled. Before we enable them, we're just going to turn off the frame skip options, and also increase the CPU clock speed. According to the website it should be at 555, and this will do nicely. And now we can go down to cheats. Here we have three options, we're going to select the second, then go back into the game. Once we see the frame rate set to 30, we can disable the cheat. And finally, we can play. With both hands by the fire. While not 100%, this is definitely a step up from the stock experience. The PSP will always be a great system, but it's nice to see that handhelds have finally arrived, which can run the games brighter, louder, 
and in most cases, much faster. As always, here's a quick thank you to all of those on our Patreon. You guys are fantastic. We cannot thank you enough for all of your support. We create video guides, reviews, and also fix them cheap Chinese boxes, as well as the A500 Mini. If you want to support our work, please check out the links below, or a simple like, share, or subscribe would do us a solid. We also have a delivery massage service, pretty ladies only. Thanks for that, John. This has been Eam Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra! Bye-bye, cutie.